Right, this is another video about gauge functions um, on an interval. Um, so as usual, we'll let delta be our gauge function and we'll let i be the closed interval from a to b. Maybe what you've been wondering is, okay, if you've got your interval and maybe you've got a gauge on that interval, how do I know that I could, like, is there a partition that's delta fine? So I know that there's lots of ways to partition a given interval. You can partition it almost any way you like. If I've got a gauge, how do I know that one of the partitions is delta fine? So we're going to prove that, well, for any gauge, we could always find a delta fine partition of this interval. So here's the proof. It's got some steps to it. It's a little bit more involved than what we might be used to so far. So here's a little trick. Let's let E be the set of all points in this interval from A to B, such that there is a delta fine partition for maybe part of this interval, say from A to X. So all points where, uh, all points X, I should add that in, in I, such that there is a delta fine partition for this subinterval. So the first thing we're gonna to try to show is the set E is not empty. So why on earth should this be a non-empty set? So I've got a picture for you. And uh, what I've got is I've got my interval from A to B. And what the idea is, is if I've got this gauge function delta, why don't I look at this interval around A, this, this kind of reddish or orange interval from A minus delta to A plus delta. And so what if I was to pick any point to the right of A but inside of that orange interval. So let's let X be in there. And so if I was to uh, highlight where that is, I'm saying let's pick any X that's in this interval right here. So for that X then, uh, what do we know? I know that an interval can be considered as a partition of itself, like a trivial partition. And so what I'm suggesting is that green interval that I have, I'll consider that little green interval from A to X as a partition of itself. And then by definition then, if I take A to be the tag, which I've denoted in purple there, then that orange interval that I already have um, would be uh, the, the, would help me satisfy the definition for that green interval to be delta fine. In other words, the partition, the subinterval in the partition that's green is contained inside of uh, A minus delta A to A plus delta A. And remember that's part of the definition of um, what it meant for a partition to be delta fine. So what have I got then? What am I trying to say? I've just showed that, okay, if X is any member um, of that green set, then X also has to be an E, right? I could find a delta fine partition. So X is an E, therefore E is not empty. So the next thing we're going to do is think some more about E. So E is a bunch of points that are just in my interval from A to B. So in particular, A to B is bounded. Uh, therefore, E should be bounded as well. And so we can say then that E should have a least upper bound or a supremum. So we'll let U be the supremum of E as usual. And what can we say so far as well? Well, U should definitely be between A and B since AB is a closed interval. And what the goal is, is we're gonna show eventually that U is actually equal to B. As an intermediate step though to help us do that, we're gonna first show that U is actually a member of this set E. So recall, what did it mean to be a member of this set E again? To be an E, we're saying it's a point that's in my interval such that the, the subinterval from A to X, or in my case from A to U now, has a delta fine partition. And so what do we know then? Okay, if I take a little bit away from U, then since U is the least upper bound, uh, this is not an upper bound for E. So therefore, uh, for A, B, or yeah, for E. So in that case then, do I wanna say, yeah. So uh, in that case, there should be a point between U minus a little bit and U, just like we're used to. And so here's my picture, right? If I take a little bit away, here's U over here, I'm saying that, well, there should be somebody named V over here that lives in my set E. And so, yes, we'll call that thing V. So there should exist some number V and E such that V is between U minus delta U and U. So there's V right there in yellow. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take advantage of the fact that, well, V is in this special set E. And remember, what did it mean to be an E? Well, that means that uh, the subinterval from A to V has a delta fine partition. That was the qualification to be an E. So if I was to draw that in a picture, I'm looking at that green interval right there from A to V. I know that it has a delta fine partition because that right endpoint V is a member of the special set E. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tack on a little bit to the end of that green subinterval. I'm gonna tack on the interval from V to U and I'm gonna consider it as a partition of itself where the point or the tag is U. And so the point of that then is that that little pink subinterval, right, is contained entirely in 
this orange subinterval. Therefore, this piece is also delta fine, since uh, the pink interval is between u minus delta u and u plus delta u. So the pink interval is delta fine as well. So what are we gonna do? What have I got? I've got the union of two delta fine intervals, uh, delta fine partitions, sorry about that. Therefore, P2 is delta fine. So P2 is a delta fine partition of this whole interval here from A to U, when I union those two together. So what did we just do? We just found a delta fine partition of the interval from A to U, where U is the right endpoint, Therefore, that means that U is in my special set E. So in other words, if I go back and look, how is this E defined? U is one of these special, U is one of these points X that has a delta fine partition from A to X. Okay, we're almost there. The last thing we're gonna to try to do is show that U actually has to be equal to B, the right endpoint of my interval I. So I do know that U is less than or equal to B, just because from A to B is a, uh, closed interval, right? So if E is contained in that, then the supremum's gotta be in there too. But what we're gonna show is that U is actually equal to B, and the way we'll do that is by contradiction. So suppose that U is less than B. So here's my picture here. I've got U, and let's suppose that it was less than B. And again, I'm thinking about to, uh, I'm gonna make some little interval around U using my gauge delta. So I'm gonna think about this orange interval, it's gonna come in handy a little bit later. Okay, so if U is less than B, what should I be able to do? I should be able to find somebody named W that's between U and U plus delta U. By the way, maybe it's the case that this uh, U plus delta U, maybe it's like over here, who knows? I just kind of randomly put it down. But the point is, what's gonna be weird here, what's gonna be bad, is there shouldn't be any space between here. That's what the proof is gonna try to show. Okay. All right, so what I'm saying is, uh, if you assume that U is less than B, well then there's gotta be somebody named W uh, that's in that little interval there. And so since U is uh, a member of E, that special set, I know that it has a delta fine partition. So what does? The interval from A to U, which is green here, it has a delta fine partition, and I'll just name it Q1, uh, Q1 dot. So again, that comes from the fact that that right endpoint U is a member of this set E. And so what we're gonna do is, we're just gonna stretch that out to UW here. And so if I think about, what if I tack on just this little pink interval here from UW and I'll take U as the tag there. Well, again, the same idea. How did I construct that pink interval? Well, that pink interval is con entirely contained inside of this orange interval from U minus delta U to U plus delta U. Therefore, this thing is delta fine as well. So similarly as before, Q2, Q2 dot is the union of two delta fine partitions. Therefore, Q2 dot is a delta fine partition of, and if I do take the union of both of those, that would be the interval from A to W. And so what does that show? Q2 is a delta fine partition of AW, of this whole interval from here to here. Therefore, this endpoint W is a member of this set E. But wait a minute. So W is a member of the set E, but U was supposed to be the supremum of E. And I assumed that U was smaller than W. So that contradicts that U is even an upper bound for this set E. So since U is supposedly smaller than W, that contradicts that U is actually the supremum of this set E. Hence, U has to be equal to B.